What's up squid? It's your squid. Uh, I've got a video on masculinity today. I've just finished writing the script for it and uh, you're going to get it all scripted straight after this little picture here. But before we do that, I just want to give a shout out to these people. They give me money. I like money. Turning some of your money into mine on a monthly basis would be ideal because then I can pay for rent and food and all of that stuff. Uh, I was having a chat with a mate of mine named Corey about Andrew Tate recently. Also, a mate of mine named Tremaine. Uh, it's been a, it, Andrew Tate has been a topic of conversation amongst uh, my male friends recently. And I wanted to do a bit of a video essay talking about masculinity in general because I think it's the crisis amongst boys and men that has caused grifters like Andrew Tate to become so successful. So, uh, as I said, consider giving me some money, but... Hang around, and if this is the first time you've seen me, poke around the channel. I'm not always this serious, I have a lot of silly videos and stuff as well. Uh, but check me out, listen to this video, poke around the channel, and check out my other stuff as well. And uh, I'll see you when I look at you. You'll see me when you look at me, but uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and engage in the comments. Tell me what you think. I don't think I'm an expert, I'm just giving you my thoughts. So give me yours as well. Thanks, guys. Andrew Tate is a grifter who is making copious amounts of money from the crisis amongst boys and young men, and the people defending him think he's being punished because of the masculine aspects of his content. If you've been paying attention to the social trends, you probably have some inkling that boys and men are struggling in the US and across the globe. They're struggling in the classroom. American girls are 14% points more likely to be school ready than boys by the age of five. Then, by high school, two-thirds of the students in the top 10% of the class, ranked by GPA, are girls, while roughly two-thirds of the students at the lowest end of the scale are boys. In 2020, at the 16 top American law schools, not a single one of the flagship law reviews had a man as editor-in-chief. In the year 2020, for every 100 women who earned a bachelor's degree, only 70 men did. But it's not just the education sector. Men are struggling in the workplace as well. One in three American men will only, with only a high school diploma, that's 10 million adult men, are now out of the labour force. The biggest drop in employment is among young men aged 25 to 34. This isn't just because millennials don't want to work or whatever. Automation has completely eliminated entire sectors of work. Auto manufacturing used to be an industry that supported those men, and it's no more. Factory or warehouse labouring used to be an industry that supported those men, but it is rapidly becoming no more, with machines that can do the same thing more efficiently. Men who entered the workforce in 1983 will earn about 10% less in real terms during the course of their lifetime than those who started a generation earlier. Over the same period, women's lifetime earnings have increased by a whopping 33%. Pretty much all of the income gains that middle-class American families have enjoyed since 1970 are because of increases in women's earnings, not men. Men are also struggling physically with their actual health. Men account for close to three out of every four deaths of despair, so suicide and drug overdoses. For every 100 middle-aged women who died of COVID up to mid-September 2021, there were 184 middle-aged men who died. It's a common knowledge that men attempt more and succeed more at self-harm on average than women, and I don't think it's a stretch to say that these things all contribute to that. In my googling as I worked on this script, I learned a lot I didn't know. I'll leave some links in the description for the sources, but I'm going to scattershot some information I learnt at you now. Firstly, boys are much more hindered by challenging environments than girls are. Girls in poor neighbourhoods and unstable families may be able to climb their way out, statistically speaking, on average. Boys are far less likely to do so. In Canada, boys born into the poorest households are twice as likely to remain poor as their female counterparts. In American schools, boys' academic performance is more influenced by family background than girls' academic performance is. Boys raised by single parents have lower rates of college enrolment than girls raised by single parents. Being raised in a single parent household, in fact, is the largest shared dynamic amongst jail inmates, which is to say the vast majority of people in jail were raised by single mothers. I'm not placing blame on single mums there, I'm simply stating a statistical fact. Boys have a much more difficult time with the bootstraps method than girls do. Secondly, Policies and programs designed to promote social mobility often work for women, but not men. 
While it is unquestionable that the dynamic between the sexes has traditionally been unequitable, with women not being afforded the same chances as men to grow financially or independently across the years, attempts to address that in recent decades have seen a marketed step back for the results of men. It's not just a natural rebalancing. Boys and men are suffering now more than they should be. There are many reasons men are struggling. For example, the decline in manufacturing jobs that puts a high value on physical strength and the rise of service sector jobs. The lack of physical requirements in a lot of workplaces leaves men who have nothing else to offer often bereft, purposeless and bitter. The lack of adequate mental health support for these men sees them taken advantage of by charlatans like Andrew Tate, who say that women are just inherently more motivated, work harder or plan ahead better. He and others claim this is a matter of individual responsibility, that you just need to man up and just do it. They make you feel like you're lazy, and the only way not to be lazy is to pay them and learn the secret to always being motivated or something? I don't fucking know. Many men just seem less ambitious, right? College women are roughly twice as likely to enrol in study abroad programs as college men. In 2020, amid COVID, the decline in college enrolment for male students was seven times that of female students. This would indicate that it isn't necessarily men not getting opportunity, rather that they're not taking it when they're presented with it. But the fact is that more men are leading haphazard and lonely lives than ever before. Roughly 15% of men say they have no close friends, up from 3% in 1990. One in five fathers doesn't live with his children. In 2014, more young men were living with their parents than with a wife or a partner. Apparently, even many who are married are not ideal mates. Wives are twice as likely to initiate divorce as husbands, for example. Putting it simply, there is absolutely a crisis amongst boys and men right now, and that cannot be disputed. I touched on it in the beginning, and I'm not going to hang on it too long because women's liberation is not the point of this video, but with things like the Me Too movement and the third wave intersectional feminism becoming more and more prevalent in our societies, I come away from this research for this script with the impression that many men are like what Dean Acheson said about Britain after World War II. They've lost an empire, but not yet found a role. Many men have an obsolete ideal. Being a man means being the main breadwinner for your family. But then when they can't meet that ideal, demoralisation follows. Ambition doesn't just happen in the same way an engine doesn't just run of its own accord. It has to be fired up first. The culture is still searching for a modern, masculine ideal to emulate, and people like Andrew Tate are taking advantage of that for personal gain. We are not instilling in many boys the nurturing and emotional skills that are so desperately important today. A close mate of mine, one of my best mates on the planet, went through an entire cancer diagnosis and chemo treatment, then fucking surgery where they opened him up and took tumours out of his kidneys without telling anyone, all because he didn't want to make it seem like he was worried about himself or, or have people worry about him or, or have it seem like he was less than before, you know? Why and what the fuck? You know what I mean? A system that labels more than a fifth of all boys as developing, developmentally disabled due to ADHD or bipolar or autism or fucking whatever is not instilling them in a sense... Is, sorry, I'll start that sentence again. I got a bit emo. A system that labels more than a fifth of all boys as developmentally disabled due to ADHD or bipolar or autism or fucking whatever is not instilling in them a sense of confidence and competence that they need, nor the ability to be vulnerable with our mates. Masculinity has gone haywire, reverting to pseudo-macho uh, pseudo cartoons like you know, Andrew Tate or even Donald Trump, politically speaking, right? Uh, they, it doesn't help. It only exacerbates the issues I've just outlined because they're obsolete. They're previous icons, you know? Like, we don't need that role anymore. We need to find the new one. But what do we do about it? All the research and all the people who are way smarter than me suggest that the positive male role models are crucial to a young boy becoming a man. Obviously, it should go without saying that if you're an adult man, you should be working hard to be that positive example yourself for the boys in your life. But I'll admit it can be hard if you don't or didn't have any of your own. I was incredibly lucky to have several amazing positive male role models growing up despite my father's suicide when I was 11. 
My mother was a badass who put herself through university on a single parent's pension, and some of her uni friends stood up and showed me a possibility model for how my life could be should I choose to be like them. People like Michael Sullivan, Ewan Sinclair Kidd, Damien Doyle, Sean Horton, and obviously my old man, the guy who went on to become my stepfather, Luke Schroeder, like, absent of my father, these men were crucial in helping me become the man I am today. But I'm not going to end the video by saying, oh, just find a family of cool people, because that's a bit of a cop-out, right? The entire point of this video was spawned because young men are so desperate for positive male role models in the modern era that they're clinging to false prophets like Andrew Tate. It isn't the fault of these young men that they're crying out for someone to see them and their foibles as legitimate. It isn't their fault that seemingly the only people who respond are grifters who take advantage of them. None of this is the fault of boys and men. We don't know what we don't know, and it's unquestionable that our social media algorithms are currently set up to be divisive, alienating, and to make you keep scrolling and keep your eyeballs on that screen. We can hack that, though. I'm not going to pretend I have all the answers, but... The algorithms can be manipulated. It's how people like Tate become so successful, and it's also how people like Adrian Bliss become successful. Wholesome and non-toxic creators can use the same tools as macho false prophets to access the minds of young men. They just don't, generally. So, yeah, I don't know, I guess. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to list a bunch of men on this next slide who I would be proud to have my sons emulate. Men in the popular eye who are worthy of your time. Non-toxic masculine men who are out there doing stuff and not just sitting there feeling sorry for themselves. The too long didn't read version of this video is thus. There is definitely a crisis among boys and men. I don't know the solution, but I think it lies somewhere near us picking better idols. And I think a group of these men got to get, if a group of these men got together to try and fix it, well then maybe we would. You know? Anyway, here's that list. I challenge you to look up anyone you don't recognise, the Green Brothers especially. Hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Poke around the channel and check out all my different playlists. My channel should probably be four or five different channels with the various varied topics I create, but I digress. Consider giving me money so I can eat and pay rent by clicking the join button below, and I'll see you when I look at your squad. You'll see me when you look at me. Leave a comment in the comments section. Tell me if you think I'm off base or if you agree with me. What's the solution, guys? Thanks for watching.